Hello students, welcome back. This program is the third part of the chapter measurement of length. In the first two programs, we talk about the importance of measuring length, the conversion between the different units of length, and some word problems based on the measurement of length. In the last program, we talk about the application of length in calculating perimeter of plane figures. Today, we are going to talk about using the measurement of length in calculating area of plane figures. First of all, let's define the term area. The term area refers to the amount of space inside the boundaries of a figure. I repeat, the term area refers to the amount of space inside the boundaries of a figure. Look at this figure. Area is inside the boundaries of this figure. But we must know where we use area in our daily life. Have you thought about it? Consider the fact that you are going to paint the walls of your room. You will need to consider the area of the walls so that you can decide on the amount of paint to buy. Still in your room, if you want to put tiles, you need to calculate the area so that you can determine how many tiles will fit in. In fact, many people such as builders, architects, carpenters, farmers, users, area as part of their daily job. For example, if you ask an architect to design your house, first he must know the area of the plot of land where you want to build your house. Secondly, he must know what is the area of the house that you want to build. You must have seen farmers working in their vegetable gardens. These farmers use area to calculate the number of seeds or amount of fertilizers to use. As such, there are many other sectors where area is the basic requirement for practical purposes. Now, let's see how to calculate area of two-dimensional figures. The area of a shape can be easily determined by just placing the shape over a square grid. As you can see in the figure here, a rectangle has been placed over square grids. Then, to obtain the area, we just count the number of squares inside the rectangle, because remember, area is whatever is inside the boundaries of the figure. While counting the number of squares, here we have 15 square units. However, sometimes it is difficult to count number of squares, because we do not always have complete squares. As you can see in the following figure, where we do not have only complete squares. So instead of using this method, it is easier to use appropriate formula to calculate area of different plane figures. Let's start with squares and rectangles. To find area of a square or a rectangle, we use this formula. Area is equal to length times width. As a square has all sides equal, its area is often calculated as area of a square equal to length times length equal to length to the square. Like in this rectangle, which has a length of 5 cm, 3 cm width, the area is length times width equal to 15. But what about the unit? 5 times 3 is 15, but we cannot use the unit centimeter for area because centimeter represents the length. To know the unit for area, let's divide the length and the width into smaller squares of length 1 centimeter. As you can see here, the length has been divided into five parts horizontally and vertically the width has been divided into three parts. In all, we have 
5 times 3, 15 squares of length 1 centimeter, which is equal to 15 square centimeter. So we have a unit here for area. The area has unit centimeter square in this situation because we have divided the length in centimeter into smaller squares of one centimeters. Similarly, if we have a rectangle of length one meter, smaller squares of one meter, we shall have unit for area meter square. Let's look at these examples. In the first example, we have a square of length five meters. The area is equal to five meters times five meters equal to 25 meters square. As I've mentioned, if the dimensions are in meters, so the area will be in meters square. In the second example, we have a rectangle of length five millimeters and width four millimeters. The area is equal to five millimeters times four millimeters is equal to 20 millimeter square. Now, let's see how to calculate area of composite figures. In this example, we have calculate the area of the following figure. This is called an L-shaped block. To calculate the area of this figure, we must first divide it into two parts to form two rectangles. Let's call the first one rectangle A and the second one rectangle B. To calculate the area of the whole figure, we need to find the areas separately. Area of triangle A is 4 centimeters by 7 centimeters equal to 28 centimeters square. The area of rectangle B is 4 centimeters times 2 centimeters equal to 8 centimeters square. If we combine these two, we will have a total area of 36 centimeters square. So the area of this composite figure is 36 centimeters square. Now, let's see how to calculate area of triangles. First, let's have a look at this rectangle. The area of this rectangle is length times width. Now, if I divide this rectangle into two equal parts, I will have a triangle. This triangle will retain the width of the rectangle and the length of the rectangle. Now, this area is half of that of the rectangle. So the area of this triangle is half times length times width. So we have obtained a formula here for area of triangle. However, for triangle, we take the length as the base and the width as the perpendicular height. This one is a right angle triangle, but this formula is used for any type of triangles, as you can see here. The area is half times base times height. In the diagrams, B stands for the base and H stands for the perpendicular height. Now, it is very, very important to understand that when using this formula, we always talk about the perpendicular height. In these three diagrams, you can see that H represents the perpendicular height. The height must make an angle of 90 degrees with the base. Now, let's see some examples. We have two different examples here. In the first one, the area is half times base times height, half times four times five, which makes 10 centimeters square. The second one, the area is half times base times height, again, equal to half times 10 times six, equal to 30 centimeters square. Let's see how to calculate area of parallelograms. Do you know what is a parallelogram? If not, a parallelogram is a flat shape with opposite sides parallel and equal in length. This is called a 
parallélogramme. To calculate the area of a parallélogramme, take the parallélogramme as you can see. The figure here, we cut the side, which is colored blue, and paste it to the right hand on the, of the second figure. Now, we obtain a rectangle. The height of the parallelogram here is the width of the rectangle, and the base is the length of the rectangle. So area of rectangle is length times width. Since both figures have same area, we conclude that the area is base times height. So area of the parallelogram is the base times the height. Again, here we are talking about perpendicular height, same as for triangles. Area of parallelogram is base times height. Let's take an example. This is a parallelogram with base 8 centimeters and height 6 centimeters. The area equal to base times perpendicular height is equal to 6 times 8 equal to 48 centimeters square. A rhombus. Do you know what is a rhombus? A rhombus is a parallelogram with all sides equal. Now, since a rhombus is a parallelogram, its area is same as that of the parallelogram. So area of rhombus is base times height. Let's look at another shape. Let's consider kites. A kite has two pairs of equal adjacent sides and its diagonal meet each other at right angles, as you can see on the diagram. Now, let's see how to calculate area of kites. Look at this kite. We have said that the two diagonals meet perpendicularly. This one is called the horizontal diagonal, and this one the vertical diagonal. If I cut this kite into two, I will have two equal triangles. A triangle has a base and a height. In this particular situation, the height of the triangle will be half the horizontal diagonal. And the base of the triangle will be the vertical diagonal of the kite. Now, area of this triangle is half times base times height. Here, the base is the vertical diagonal and the height is half the horizontal diagonal. Why half? Because when we cut the kite into two, this horizontal diagonal has been divided into two equal parts. So the height of this triangle is half the horizontal diagonal. Simplifying this part, we have half times half is one quarter times vertical diagonal times the horizontal diagonal. Now, this kite was divided into two. So if we want to find the area of the whole figure, we must multiply this area by two. Area of two triangles, that is, these two triangles, will be two times area of one triangle. Two times one quarter times vertical diagonal times horizontal diagonal makes half product of the diagonals. Product means the multiplication of these two diagonals. This gives us the area of the kite. So area of a kite is half product of its diagonals. Let's look at some example now. In this example, you can see two kites. In the first one, the area is half times the product of the diagonal equal to half times 12 times 5 equal to 30 centimeters square. Remember, we are working with area, so the unit is centimeter square. In the second example, you have the diagonals are 5 centimeters and 8 centimeters. So the area will be half times 5 times 8 equal to 20 centimeters square. Now, let's look at 
another shape called a trapezium. A trapezium is a quadrilateral, that is, it consists of four sides having one pair of parallel sides. The parallel sides here are A and B, while H in this diagram represents the perpendicular height of the trapezium. Let's see how to calculate area of such trapezium. Consider a trapezium where we have cut it into two parts horizontally. I have taken the upper part and pasted it to the right hand side of the blue part. The new figure formed is now a parallelogram. You know that area of parallelogram is base times height. The figure that we have obtained on the right hand side is a parallelogram with base A plus B. You will see from the figure on the left hand side where A and B comes from. The height of the parallelogram is half that of the trapezium because we cut the trapezium into two equal parts. So here we have area equal to half H times A plus B. It means that area of trapezium is equal to half times A plus B times H. A and B were the parallel sides of the trapezium. So we write area of trapezium as half times sum of parallel sides times height. Now let's see how to calculate area of trapeziums in these two examples. In the first one, we have a trapezium with two parallel sides. The upper part is 1.6 meters and the lower part is 4 meters. We have two parallel sides, 1.6 meters, 4 meters, and the perpendicular height, 2 meters. So the area equal to half sum of parallel sides times height. Here it is half times 1.6 plus 4 times 2, equal to 5.6 meters square. In the second trapezium, we have area is equal to half sum of parallel sides times height again. So half times 2.9 plus 1.3 times 0 0.9. Now you must always remember while doing calculation, you must always respect order of operation. So you add 2.9 with 1.3, then you multiply by half and 0 0.9. We cannot divide 2.9 by 2. You have learned it in the chapter, order of operations. Here, the area is 1.89 centimeters square. Now, let's look at conversion of one unit of area to another. We have seen that if we have length in centimeter, the area will be in centimeter square. If we have length in meter, the area is meter square. If length is in millimeter, the area will be in millimeter square. Same for kilometers. So you can see that we have different units for area. You know how to convert units of length, but it is not the same for area. I will show you why. Consider a square of length one centimeter. The area of this square is one centimeter times one centimeter. You know that in one centimeter there are 10 millimeters. So one centimeter is 10 millimeters times again 10 millimeters. So the area of the same square is 10 times 10 is 100 millimeter square. If I use centimeter, I will have one centimeter square. But in millimeters, we have 100 millimeter square. So one centimeter square is equal to 100 
mm square. In one centimeter, we have 10 millimeters, but in one centimeter square, we have 100 millimeter squares. So you, that must be very clear to you that the conversion of units for length is not the same as conversion of units for area. Similarly, if we have a square of length one meter, the area will be one meter times one meter equal to one meter square. In one meter, we have 100 centimeters, and in one meter here, we have 100 centimeters. If we multiply 100 by 100, we will have 10,000 centimeters square. So in one meter square, we have 10,000 centimeters square. Similarly, in one kilometer square, we have 1,000 meters times 1,000 meters equal to 1 million meter square. Now, let's see how to convert between the different units of area. We have kilometer square. To convert kilometer square into meter square, we multiply by 1 million. To convert meter square to centimeter square, we multiply by 10,000. To convert centimeter square to millimeter square, we convert by 100. Moving backward, to convert millimeter square to centimeter square, we divide by 100. From centimeter square to meter square, we divide by 10,000. From meter square to kilometer square, we divide by 1 million. In land transaction, we do not use centimeter square, millimeter square, or even meter square. Most in Mauritius, we use units like toise, pairs, arpent, or hectares. Maybe these words are new to you. Let's see the connection between these terms, toise, pairs, arpent, and hectare, with meter square. In one toise, we have 3.8 meter square. In one pairs, we have 42.21 meter square. In one upper, we have 4,221 meter square. And in one hectare, we have 10,000 meter square. Now, let's have a look of how to do the conversion between the different units of area. Here, we have 15 centimeter square to millimeter square. We must remember this figure, same as for conversion of length, where I have explained to you that this picture is very important while doing conversion of units. Looking at this figure, to convert from centimeter square to millimeter square, you will see that we must multiply by 100. So 15 centimeter square is equal to 1,500 millimeter square. Now we have to convert 4.5 meter square to centimeter square. From meter square to centimeter square, we must multiply by 10,000. So 4.5 meter square equal to 45,000 centimeter square. If we now have to convert 55 millimeter square to centimeter square, we must divide by 100. So the answer is 0 0.55 centimeter square. Now, I will give you some exercises for practice. In these four diagrams, you need to calculate the areas. These are some word problems based on area. As I have been telling you, in the previous two programs, you can take the help of either your teachers or parents. Finally, let's see what we have learned in today's program. In today's lesson, we have learned area of plane figures, namely squares, rectangles, 
triangles, parallelograms, rhombus, kites, and trapezium. We have also learned the conversion of units of area. So students, this set of three programs based on measurement of length ends here. I hope that you have enjoyed being with us. Till the next program, goodbye, see you soon.